My name is Simon Yokoshis and in this tutorial we're gonna have a look at using caching decorators to speed up our applications. Now decorators in general are a fantastic concept in Python and they enable very interesting features for us. Due to the fact that we can save intermediate data inside the decorator functions, we can store calculated results of functions that we pass into our decorators. Now this lets us speed up our applications because we can cache a result and prior to executing a heavy calculation again, we can simply check if we have already calculated it before and if so, we can simply return the cached result. Now this tutorial is not an introduction to decorators. So if you're new to decorators, I highly recommend first having a look at my other tutorial introduction to decorators in Python before proceeding here. I'll post the link in the description. Ok, let's get started. In here I have two functions that simulate a heavy calculation. In order to simulate this, we'll simply delay for 3 seconds before continuing. The first function multiply takes one number and multiplies it with itself. So for example multiply 5 would be 25. And the second function add will create the sum of number a and number b. Now these are just two dummy functions to simulate functions where we do a lot of heavy and time consuming calculations. Now every time we call this function it takes quite a bit of time to calculate. Let's have a look. So let's start our python interpreter and use our add function. And this module is called caching. So from caching import add. And let's also import multiply. And invoke these functions. So for example add 1 and 1. And as expected this takes quite a bit of time to calculate. Now the big downside here is that calculating the same thing again will again start from scratch and we'll have to wait. The same applies to the multiply function. So for instance multiply 7. Each time we calculate the result of multiply 7 it will take some time. Now this is where caching decorators come into play. Let's enable these. All we have to do is to decorate our add and multiply functions with our caching decorator. Which we'll initialize here at the top. And it's called cached. To decorate our functions we can write add cached at the top of the function definition. And this will now use our cache implementation that we implemented at the top which we'll discuss in a second. Now in order to make this more obvious I've added a few logging messages. We'll have a look at these in a second. At the moment the debug level is set to info. So there should be no logging information at the moment because all log statements are set to debug level only. Let's run again. So from caching import add and from caching import multiply. And let's add 1 and 1 again. And the first time we execute this will again take some time. But watch what happens if we invoke the same function signature again. Much faster. So every time we execute a function with some parameters that we've already calculated, we'll get the result that was cached in the first place. So let's also invoke our multiply function again, multiply 7. And this takes some time. And multiply 7 again. And we get the immediate result without recalculating. So if we do some more calculations, multiply 8. This will take some time. And multiply 9. Again this will take some time. But if we invoke the multiply 8 or multiply 9 again now, this goes much quicker because we are now accessing the cached result. In order to illustrate this we can also set the logging level to debug now and see what's happening behind the scenes. So here we debug that we are executing our add function with the arguments 1 and 1. Then we are calculating the result and storing it in our cache. The next time we invoke add with the same arguments we see again that we are using this signature. And instead of calculating the result we retrieve it from our cache. Which will speed up things a lot because no calculation is required. So let's see how our caching decorator works under the hood. So in here we initialize our cache decorator function and pass in the function to execute. Next we create a dictionary in which we can store our caches in. Inside our wrapper function we define our signature which is a tuple of our function object to invoke and all its passed in arguments. Next we log our signature that we are invoking. And here comes the actually interesting section. Now in here we check if a key for our signature is already saved in our cache dictionary. If it is then we log to return the cache data and simply return the value from our cache dictionary. And if the signature is not stored inside our cache dictionary then we'll log to calculate it now. And here we create a variable result 
and its value is the return value of invoking our function that we have passed into our decorator function, where we do a tuple unpacking to get in all the needed arguments. Now this is useful to not limit ourselves on a fixed number of arguments, because if we have a quick look at the add and multiply functions at the bottom, we see that they have a different length of arguments that we have to pass in. Using a tuple unpacking in here, we guarantee that all needed arguments are passed into our function to invoke. So after calculating the result, we use another logging message that we are about to store the result in our cache. So we use our cache dictionary and use our signature as key and store the result as a value. Now due to the fact that we use this function as a decorator, the cache won't get out of scope and we can keep all the previously calculated results in memory. Next we return the result which is either coming from our calculation or from our cache and return the wrapped function, perfect. This enables us now using cache data whenever we have already calculated something using a function and given arguments. This will dramatically speed up our applications because we don't need to calculate the same thing over and over again. I hope this illustrated to you the power of decorators. Now there are a lot of more situations where using decorators can be useful to improve our applications and reduce code duplication. For example we can use them to time a function, execute code repeatedly or to ensure that we have set our environment correctly before executing a function. If you have any questions please post them below and I'll try to answer them. If you like this tutorial please give a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to get news about new and upcoming tutorials. And as always, if you would like to see a future tutorial about a specific topic, just let me know. Again, my name is Simon Yukoshis and thanks for watching.